Mr. Beast is obsessed with Elon Musk. He's actually gone on record saying his goal in life is to literally be Elon one day. But this isn't just some simple man crush, it runs deeper than that. In fact, Mr. Beast is actually applying the same secrets of success from the startup world that's propelled Elon to become one of the richest and most successful people on the planet. And in the process, Mr. Beast is completely changing the game for content creators everywhere. In fact, Mr. Beast even went on record saying he turned down a billion dollar offer for his business. Instead, he's raising 150 million from venture capitalists at a $1.5 billion valuation. So just how big could his media empire get? I've been studying YouTubers for the last decade as a former YouTube employee in Silicon Valley. And in this video, I'm gonna share the top four secrets that make Mr. Beast fundamentally different and why he has a legitimate shot to be the next Elon Musk. Now you might be thinking, Mr. Beast is the biggest YouTuber we've ever seen. Who cares about Elon and tech nerds? But let's be real, even as huge as YouTube stars get, their influence and power is dwarfed by tech founders. Elon has a net worth of 5,000 Mr. Beasts, and one private jet he owns costs more than Mr. Beast has ever made on YouTube. More importantly, Elon is electrifying transportation with Tesla and making humanity multi-planetary with SpaceX. He's literally trying to save our planet, and if that fails, our species. Mr. Beast just makes YouTube videos, right? Well, not exactly. Mr. Beast is actually a completely different animal than any YouTuber that's come before and the first who could potentially ascend to the lofty level of Elon. And to understand how he just might pull it off, let's check out the first clues in his incredible backstory. Today, at only 24 years old, Mr. Beast, aka Jimmy Donaldson, has 165 million subscribers across all his channel, more than 20 billion views, and made a video about Squid Game that got more views than the actual Squid Game TV show. While the massively viral nature of his content makes it look like an overnight success, it's easy to forget that Mr. Beast used to be a complete nobody. He was a community college dropout raised by a single mother serving in the military. He didn't even have the money to spend on a camera at first. What he did have though was an unhinged obsession for YouTube. We just literally obsessed from the time we woke up to the time we went to bed. That's literally all we did. It's that obsession that drove him to spend all his waking hours experimenting to find out how to create the best YouTube content possible. The first videos he made were pretty unremarkable gaming and reaction videos that would only get a few hundred views. But he was willing to try out of the box ideas and fail over and over for the sake of learning how to improve his content. So after dropping out of college, it's fitting that the first of Mr. Beast's videos to go viral was enduring incredible amounts of boredom that very few others were willing to do, like counting to 100,000 over 40 consecutive hours, or literally watching paint dry. Who would have thought this content was the beginning of the biggest YouTube rise to stardom we've ever seen? But what you might not know is that many of Silicon Valley's legendary startups also had similar, incredibly humble beginnings. These two college dropouts started experimenting with websites in a garage with a very simple mission to organize the world's information. The first product looked like something you could probably put together in PowerPoint, and they almost sold the company for scraps to a competitor. These two guys started their company while at a school competition for building computers. And this is the first prototype they came up with, which looks like a middle school science project. But of course, Apple would go on to usher the era of the smartphone and become the single most valuable company in the world. You would never, in your wildest imagination, think that this was the beginning of a trillion dollar company that would change the lives of billions of people. These companies are such an entrenched part of our daily lives now that we forget, just like Mr. Beast's videos, the future often starts off looking like a toy. And those toys are often at first ridiculed by others. Even after years of working on his videos, Mr. Beast only had a few thousand subscribers to show for it. But he had an unwavering conviction that YouTube was the future of TV, and was willing to bet on that long before other people thought YouTube was sexy. You might not know this, but the founders of Google started the company at a time when everyone thought Yahoo and others had already won the battle for search. When Elon Musk said he was starting a company to build a more expensive car, taking on giant manufacturers like Ford and Toyota head-on, no one would fund him. And at one point, he had to take government money to stave off bankruptcy. A lot of the most transformational innovations are ridiculed and overlooked by others. So how do these founders pull off the impossible? It's even more miraculous when you consider that many founders began, just like Mr. Beast, as college dropouts who never ran a business before, and often weren't even thinking about starting a company. They were instead just super passionate about solving a problem that was deeply personal to them, an obsession that kept them up at night. Larry and Sergey at Google were PhDs obsessed with the idea of indexing the world's knowledge by treating every website like an academic citation that linked back to each other. Elon was obsessed with the concept of compressing the cost of battery technology to make electric cars cheaper than gas-powered cars. And like Mr. Beast, that intense passion is what fueled these founders from nothing through the struggle and ridicule over years when everyone else would have given up. Even when people would tell me it's crazy, no odds 
in my favor with no equipment, no nothing, no social skills, no editing, no camera, no one to teach me, no one to help me. I'm gonna figure it out or I'm gonna die trying. But there are tons of deeply passionate creators on YouTube. What really makes Mr. Beast different from every other creator is what came next. After years of honing his craft, in 2018, Mr. Beast finally discovered the format that would make him a star, stunt philanthropy. Mr. Beast filmed himself giving away thousands of dollars in cash to random people from Uber drivers to the homeless, capturing every moment of shock and joy. It makes for brilliant content, but what's completely different about this strategy is it's also a business model innovation. Let me explain. Just like a Silicon Valley startup, inventing a cool new product isn't good enough if everyone can just copy you. Pioneers who are the first to venture westward get arrows in their backs. And that's what happens not just to startups like Meerkat, which was quickly cloned by Twitter, but also most YouTubers like Michelle Phan, who pioneered the beauty makeup tutorial, or MKBHD, who pioneered the tech unboxing format, both of who inspired thousands of copycats. In the case of Mr. Beast, though, the sheer scale and budget of his productions are impossible for any YouTuber to copy. His business strategy of outspending everyone is literally there to see in every video title. But to really pull this strategy off in the right way, you have to get as big as possible, as fast as possible to put some distance between you and the competition. And it's clear Mr. Beast is thinking about getting big fast in a completely different way than other creators. I will spend every dollar back into the channel forever. I don't care. I just want to be the biggest. So what exactly is Mr. Beast doing differently? Well, as soon as Mr. Beast's first video went viral and made $10,000, he gave all of that away in his next video. And then, as his videos became even more popular, he can now afford to give away hundreds of thousands or even millions per video. That aggression is unheard of in the YouTube world, but it's so common in the startup world that it spawned its own term, blitzscaling. Amazon, for example, famously didn't turn a profit until six years after going public. That's how focused they were on reinvesting in growth. And that's because Jeff Bezos knew that the bigger Amazon got, the more it could spend on its own warehouses and delivery infrastructure to offer faster and cheaper deliveries, which leads to more money. And so the virtuous cycle continues. So it's fitting that Mr. Beast himself invested 10 million into his own warehouse complex to shoot the legendary Squid Game video that broke YouTube. And just like Amazon, the bigger Mr. Beast gets, the more he can spend on his lavish giveaways and production, which gets more views and money, and so the virtuous cycle repeats. This is exactly why startups raise venture capital in the first place, so they can grow faster than just self-funding with free cash flow. And so it makes complete sense Mr. Beast is, unlike other YouTubers, raising venture money. 150 million for 10% of his business. But this is easier said than done. And here's the secret to making it work that other creators have a hard time copying. Mr. Beast is actually not really a creator anymore. Let me explain. When a startup first launches, the founders are doing everything themselves. They're talking to users, writing code, setting up payroll, finding an office, even cleaning out the trash. But then they hit a point where there's so much to do, they can't do it all themselves. They need to start hiring other people and putting in place the systems to scale. Zuck may have started off as a hacker in his dorm room, but now he has teams of thousands of engineers working on products that he's setting the direction for. And you better bet Elon isn't assembling cars or spaceships himself by hand. This transition to a manager and a leader of others is a critical inflection point that most solo entrepreneurs and creators can't or don't want to make. Many creators prefer to be artists who control every aspect of their content. Everything is done by me. Every word you hear from me is scripted by me. Every topic is picked by me. I film everything myself. And as artists, they can run a small lifestyle business that can be a great living for themselves but inevitably hit a ceiling for how big they can get. But anyone who wants to be as big as Elon and scale like a tech startup has to learn how to give up control and hand over the reins to others and focus instead on becoming a manager and a leader. And it makes sense that at a certain level of scale, you can accomplish so much more by hiring specialists who can do specific tasks so much better than you can. Mr. Beast employed an entire Hollywood visual effects team to produce his Squid Game video, doing a much better job than Mr. Beast could ever hope to do. In fact, Mr. Beast's team has roughly doubled every year, roughly what you'd expect to see in a fast-growing startup. And he manages the most complex organization of any YouTuber creator I know, organized into departments of people from creative, set design and construction, post-production, accounting, even his own new business venture team in Night Media. He contracts with a team of engineers who've launched several successful Mr. Beast branded apps. And to highlight just how specialized his team gets, he even has a Skunkworks team of six people just focused on thumbnails. That frees up time for Mr. Beast to just focus on what he's best in the world at, 
coming up with creative ideas, and putting out compelling content that commands our attention. If you really do want to be the best you can possibly be, be the biggest YouTuber, you should look at hiring as a way to free up your time so you can do more important things. This isn't exactly as simple as it sounds though. And part of the reason other creators don't make this transition is because the skill set required to create content and to manage teams are completely different. We see this all the time in the startup world where brilliant innovators and inventors build incredible products, but then can't manage or lead teams to scale that. In fact, it's been common for years to replace founders with a professional gun for hire CEO once the company starts to take off. Larry and Sergey were compelled by their board of directors to hire Eric Schmidt as their boss just a couple years after Google's Series A. Zuck hired bigwig ex-Googler Sheryl Sandberg as his COO to help run the day-to-day -day of his business and avoid making big managerial mistakes. And naturally, Mr. Beast is going through his own growing pains as a manager. Several former employees said his company has been rife with politics and bullying, according to the New York Times. One of them, video editor Nate Anderson, said working for Mr. Beast was the worst week of his life. A lot of this, though, might just be the byproduct of trying to be the best. Mr. Beast has often said he pushes himself to work around the clock nonstop, very reminiscent of his idol Elon, who's famous for working up to 120 hours a week. That kind of work environment will naturally burn out some employees. One thing's for sure though, if Mr. Beast wants to take what he's doing to the next level, the key will be in mastering the art of team and culture building that's at the heart of Silicon Valley's playbook. So what comes next? Remember that Mr. Beast revealed he turned down a billion dollars for his company. He then went on to say, if you want to buy my business, you got to come at me with at least 10 billion. Now, media companies are typically not worth nearly that much. BuzzFeed made 400 million in revenue last year and is only worth about 250 million. Mr. Beast, on the other hand, is making about 100 million a year, but he's valuing his business at 100 times revenue, much more in line with a hot early stage tech company. And that's not completely unfair. Kanye's Yeezy brand is worth over a billion, and Kim Kardashian's Skims is worth 3.2 billion. And Mr. Beast arguably trumps all of them. He can get 10,000 people to show up and wait in line for his burger joint's opening. The hardest thing to do in any consumer business is to get people's attention. And creators like Mr. Beast are finally figuring out how to harness the full power of that by borrowing from startup principles. Media businesses like Vice once sought multi-billion dollar valuations with their promise of reinventing media empires for the modern age. And while they've largely flamed out, Mr. Beast may actually be the one that realizes that vision. But Mr. Beast still has a long ways to go before reaching Elon status and becoming worth hundreds of billions. The final act to building trillion dollar companies in Silicon Valley is figuring out how to continually reinvent yourself expanding into adjacencies, building off your existing strengths. The poster child for this is Jeff Bezos, who started off selling books online, but then opened up the platform for anyone to start selling stuff on Amazon. And Elon has somehow figured out how to be CEOs of multiple companies building electrical cars, space rockets, low orbit satellites, and machine brain interfaces. For his part, Mr. Beast is also running multiple companies, including Mr. Beast YouTube, Mr. Beast Crypto, and Rubber Duck Company, all of which draw from his crazy scale and distribution as a YouTuber. He's also started Food Lines, Mr. Beast Burger, and Feastables, helped fund a creator financing company, Creative Juice, and even released his own mobile games, Finger on the App. Just literally what I did on YouTube, I want to do at the restaurant. Like, it makes money, it's profitable, and I'm just like, yeah, just keep it. Like, grow, grow. Like, don't give me the money. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. I mean, if you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it, you'd be the most powerful man on earth. But what is Mr. Beast's endgame? Elon Musk's personal mission is to save the human race. And like Elon, Mr. Beast eventually wants to tackle the biggest of humanity's problems. I would love to do something one day as crazy as, for the next year, I'm not gonna let someone starve in Africa. That's what I wanna do. I wanna spend my whole life making so much money that I can do the unthinkable. This is honestly a breath of fresh air amidst the toxicity of creators who just wanna get rich and famous at any cost. So it's great to see that Mr. Beast has a huge philanthropic side to him, not unlike the Silicon Valley elite. For all the criticism of big tech billionaires, most of them have publicly committed to donating half their wealth on the website, The Giving Pledge. For his part, Mr. Beast has already applied his incredible creativity and flair for scale to plant 20 million trees to celebrate hitting 20 million subscribers. So it's only appropriate that so many tech luminaries, including Elon Musk, were the biggest donors to Team Trees. Mr. Beast may have a long ways to go, but he's the first YouTuber following the pathway of entrepreneurs like Elon Musk and Bill Gates, who've completely reshaped the lives of billions of people. But there is a dark side to this incredible pace of innovation and technology. In fact, the metaverse is already being misused in disastrous ways that no one's talking about yet. 
Check out this video to learn more and hear my take on what we need to do to stop that from becoming our dystopian future. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.